I remember that day like it was a uh, like it was yesterday. I remember the uh, the, the, the report. I remember uh, seeing it in the news and imagining exactly how it went down. I remember that first episode of Dragon Ball Z with more clarity than any birthday, more than my freaking high school graduation. Okay, so picture this. A blue-green streak enters the atmosphere, turns blood red, and then crashes into the earth. No one dares go near it. No one dares tamper with that form of mystery, that form of power. And only a little ways away, a black boy with an afro who no longer believes in God stands with a Japanese sword in his right hand as a police officer fires up a flurry of shots, six of them total. <laughs> one hit his back, two in his leg, one in his shoulder, one in his elbow, and one in his hand. Enter the black boy's body. The first three came before he began to run, while the last three came later. With his back, to the officers firing at him. When he has nothing left to give, he falls to the ground, his Japanese sword clattering against the pavement. He is face up as he dies, feels the cool air on his punctured black skin. But in his ears, he can only hear the echo of the officer's gun as he shoots, shoots. In a country that nearly religiously reinforces the idea that we are all different, but that all men are created equal, Richard Fleck of the New York Times argues that ideas like racial stereotypes should never have existed in the first place. This further proves the notion that no matter how different you may seem, Society's view of you will likely have more influence on your fate than you ever will. We see this reflected in the story of Eric, a black nerd boy, who quickly becomes familiar with this concept when he learns about the death of Darian Hunter, a boy very similar to himself. Eric is then forced to contemplate how his own individuality has shaped his life, but how it unfortunately wouldn't have prevented it from ending. The Last Black Samurai by Ethan Moore. About four weeks before Darian was murdered, uh, I remember this, this really big event. Thousands of nerds, geeks, and dorks and all like converged on the Salt Lake City Palace for the yearly Comic-Con. I always thought about why it was held in Salt Lake City in the first place, but I guess there damn sure wouldn't be a pepper palace in Salt Lake City, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I always wondered if uh, maybe Darian was there. Maybe we could have met, you know, maybe we could have been friends. I remember I checked all the online forums. I talked to the officials. I even called his parents, but nothing. There was no one who even resembled Derek at that convention, you know? It wouldn't have been hard to spot him. Someone tall and nerdy, skinny and black, so unlike everyone else around him. Uh, a speck of pepper and a salt shaker. <laughs> I know we had to have had some things in common, you know? We could have bonded. We could have been brothers. Oreo was what it was called. <laughs> you know, in high school, uh, black on the outside, white on the inside, sometimes it would come as a, a whisper, you know, a sideways comment in the hallways. <laughs> Other times it would come as a shout, but always followed by laughter. I always wondered why I even put up with it in the first place, you know? I, I had this idea that was always crystallizing in my head that, that black men were, were dangerous, you know? Based on my brother and my dad and all the school bullies, I mean, maybe I was especially dangerous. You know, where I come from, being white is being ideal, you know? And if being an Oreo was the closest that I could get, then I would take it. <laughs> and if being white meant being nerdy, then I would be the nerdiest. I would hang out with all the, the nerds and the hackers and the geeks. I would read all the manga that I could get my hands on. I would watch Japanese anime for days on end, and I would wield the Japanese... Um, 
I, I build a Japanese sword in my senior pictures. Just like Darian did. I always wonder if maybe uh, we went to the same things. Like maybe he was bullied in high school too. Maybe he understood what it meant to be an Oreo. To always be stuck in this shell, trying to be so different. But to them, you'll only be just like everybody else. I know we had some things in common. I know we went through the same struggles. It, it had to be that way. I've imagined it too many times. Me and Darian hanging out at his crib, you know, watching the boondocks and playing all of our favorite games. His mother would barge in and tell him about all the drugs he was smuggling under the mattress. <laughs> we wouldn't care because we would be different together. We'd be those two black kids in this really, really big white city. And we wouldn't care. Because how could we? How could someone like, like Darian or someone like me see this coming? You can't change the world by yourself. That's why I wish I could have been there for him, you know? I was only... 10 years old when I discovered shows like, like Dragon Ball Z, you know? This wasn't like Dexter's Laboratory or The Simpsons, you know, where violence was inconsequential. This was, this was real life. When that farmer died in that first episode, he was dead. I was expecting him to stand back up, you know, clutching his chest in pain, but he didn't. He stayed down and the show went on without him. And that's the way real life was. I just, I wanted to live in that sort of world, you know, where, where power was more fluid, you know, more attainable. I wanted to live in a world where, where I wouldn't be beat up if my brother or some bully or my dad wanted to kill me. If Gohan was put in that situation, he could have stopped him. If Cloud Strife was put in that situation, he could have stopped him. Me and Darian couldn't. No matter how hard, we try, we will never be bulletproof. I just know what it's like to be a black boy in a white city. And to always feel like you're, you're trapped in this, this box. You, you're trapped in all these restrictions and you just can't get out until you finally make the mistake that you've been trying so hard to avoid. Your whole life until you finally fall into the trap that they've been planting for you since day one. And you do what anyone does when a cop pulls out, pulls out a, a gun or a walkie-talkie or a taser or a bat and you run. Not knowing that the consequence for running is death. Because in this city, you die if you're a black boy with a sheathed sword. You die if you're a black boy with a toy BB gun. You die if you're a black boy and your hands are empty. You die if you're a black boy and your hands are full. You die if you're a black boy and you stand for something. You die if you're a black boy and you stand for nothing. You die if you believe in God. You die if you don't. You die, you die, you die. No matter how hard you try to be just like them, I imagine myself one more time, but this time in, in Japan. For a split second, I, I can close my eyes and I am the black boy with an afro who no longer believes in God, who stands with a Japanese sword in his right hand as the peaceful wilderness of Japan soars around him. He strikes at the darkness. He moves with the light. He protects the innocent. He is the black samurai Darian always wanted to be. The one that he died being. 